back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I make my acrylic keychains. Now I start with blanks. You can get them from a lot of different places. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Wisconsin State Shaped Blank that I have to make this super cute little home keychain. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go through all of the tools and all the supplies you'll need to make this and then I will show you exactly what I do step by step. So let's get started. As you can see, I have a lot of different tools sitting here. You don't always need all of these, but this is how I make mine and the tools that I find essential to make them. So the first thing you're gonna start off with is your blank. Now this one has the brown paper protective cover on it. This is just to keep it from getting scratched during shipping or however you choose to ship it. I have a ton of these and they're all kind of together. So I always keep that on so they don't get scratched in case I don't wanna cover it with glitter or vinyl. The next thing I use is the UV resin that I get from Amazon. There's a few different kinds. I've used a few different ones. I really don't have a preference on which one I like the best. So today we're gonna to be using this one. As always, I'll put the links for everything that I use here in my description of the video so you can go ahead and go find those. Something else you'll need that I, I like to use is a silicone mat of some sort. Now this is a silicone pot holder, which I actually got at Hobby Lobby for I think $2 now that they're on sale. It's part of their spring stuff, so right now they're super cheap. You can get them from Walmart as well as from Amazon. You can use a flat silicone mat. What's really nice about this is if you do get resin on it, if you cure it under your light or in the sunlight, it'll just pop right off because nothing really sticks to silicone. So it's a really easy way to prevent big messes with something that's gonna stick to plastic or your desk forever or without being able to get it taken off with something sharp and potentially scratching. So really easy, really cheap to get, to just protect your surface when you're working with the resin. So aside from that, I have my keychain hardware. I use a variety of jump ring sizes, which you'll see why when I put the keychain together. I also have my keychain with the chain link attached. I also use a couple different things to sort of embellish my keychains. One is a tassel. These are about, mm, I would say about an inch and a half. Yeah, about an inch and a half long. Hangs on one side. I usually pick a color that kind of matches or sometimes contrasts depending on what the keychain is. I also use these little pendants. I get these from Amazon. It's just a flat little disc. And what I do with this is I fill this with resin and put a matching glitter or again, a contrasting glitter, something that goes with the keychain well. Some of the other tools, just real quick. These are some jewelry pliers. You don't have to use jewelry pliers. You can use regular pliers. I like how small they are. Lots of help there. Of course, my squeegee for transferring my vinyl, my weeding ring for when I weed it. I use the Cricut True Control knife or any X-Acto knife to get the cover off of the blank. Easy to do it, to keep it flat against the surface and not scratch it. Weeding tool. And then a couple super, super helpful things that I'm always gonna suggest that you use. Some of these silicone brushes are going to make your life super, super easy when you move around this resin on your blank. So again, it's a silicone tip, so your resin's not gonna stick to it. It's super easy to clean off, and it, it really helps to get your resin really even on your blank. Another thing is, is this awesome ring tool that you can open your jump rings with. Now I get this from 651. It's super, super clever. You just grab a jump ring and stick it right there in that open spot and voila, just like that. And you can open your jump ring. I, before I got this, I was just using two pairs of pliers and most of the time I dropped it. So since I got this, I don't ever drop my jump rings, which is great because once they're on the floor, I usually can't find them. So with that being said, the last thing is you're gonna need a UV lamp. Now I got this one off of Amazon for $9. It's a 36 watt amp. 
when I looked at the description of this particular resin, it said that you're gonna want the 36 watt or higher. The higher you go, the quicker the resin is going to cure on your blank. If you don't wanna buy the light and you live in a place where there's lots of sunshine, you can also cure your resin with the sunshine UV rays. So it takes a little longer when you do it that way versus using the light. And I found that sometimes it can make your resin look a little smoother and a little shinier. So there are times that I use it up here in Wisconsin. Lately, it hasn't been too bright, so I use my light a lot. And there are a lot of people who can use um, epoxy for the coating on the keychains, but I prefer to use the resin because if I wanna get a keychain done and sent out in the same day, that's possible with this because it cures pretty quick within a matter of minutes and you can go ahead and get it packaged and sent in the same day. So those are all my tools. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get started and show you step-by-step step how I get these keychains with glitter and resin from start to finish. And hopefully you enjoy and you will do it as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna decide which side is gonna be the front. Now, some of them you can pick like this pineapple doesn't really matter which side you make the front. Something like this kind of matters which side you make the front. Considering it's a certain shape, it needs to face a certain way. So this is going to be my front. That's where I'm gonna put my decal. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that protective sheet on there and I'm gonna flip it over and take the protective sheet off the back. When I make mine, I usually only put glitter and resin on the back side and just let it sparkle through on the front. Here I've had one, which I can show you that I've done that. I put the glitter on the back and it sparkles through the front super nice because the acrylic is really clear and it leaves a really pretty sparkle without being too, too thick and weighing the keychain down. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. This is when I use my True Control knife or you can use whichever X-Acto knife you want. It's super easy to get right under that paper and peel it off. Sometimes, depending on where you order your blanks from, they might have a blue film, they might have a clear film, they might have a different color paper. It really doesn't make a difference. It's just to keep your blank protected. So I have that off and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a thin layer of my UV resin right onto this blank. And that's how I'm gonna get my glitter to stick. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. You'll see exactly how I smooth it out and I usually go down kind of eye level with it so you can really see that you're not gonna get any craters in that UV resin. If you do, it'll leave your glitter kind of funky and it might not turn out exactly how you want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I will be right back. Now that I have gotten my thin layer of resin on, I'm gonna go ahead and start sprinkling my glitter. I usually transfer it off of the silicone mat, just put it on a piece of cardstock so I don't waste a ton. That way I can sprinkle it back into that jar and I'm not just throwing it away. If it gets in that silicone mat, it's pretty difficult to get off. You have to wash it. There's really no way of saving it, especially with this one and that honeycomb texture. It's pretty much a lost cause if you get glitter in it. Soap and water will wash it off, but it's pretty hard to save. So as you can see, I just sprinkle it even on the blank, just try and get a nice even layer. And it's gonna go right into that UV resin and it's gonna make it super sparkly. Before you put your final coat, it might look a little dull. Just kind of shake off the excess there. You wanna be careful if you, if you take this and you tip it to the side, that UV resin is gonna drip off. So you wanna try and keep it super flat. I just do a quick shake there so it comes off. If there was any extra that's sitting kinda of on top of that resin, just to save it, doesn't get gloppy, it doesn't look crazy. So now that the glitter's on, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this under my light, let it cure, and move my glitter, and move on to my next step. Something I like to do with the pendants here is I add some uh, resin inside it and then make the glitter match. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this leftover glitter that I had and a new sheet of cardstock to make this pendant here. So all I do is just a quick little bit of resin in there. Let it kind of spread out a little. 
You don't want to put too much because you don't want to overflow it over the sides because you're going to put another coat on. So then I just go ahead and use this glitter that I saved from putting the glitter on the blank and just tap it down on there and get it on there. It adds a nice little sparkly touch to your keychain to make it look a little more finished than just having the keychain on the key ring. So just like your blank, once you have that done, be careful, try and keep it really flat and just stick it right under your light to cure. Okay, now that both of those pieces are done curing, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start on the other side. Now, I know they're done because they're not sticky anymore. It kinda is gonna depend on your light. Sometimes if you have a light that is a higher watt light than what I'm using, it's gonna cure a little faster. If you do it in the sunlight, it might cure a little slower. But I'm gonna actually come back to this side and put a final coat on after I'm done with the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the protective cover off of the front side so we can put our vinyl decal on. Now with this side, because I'm not gonna glitter, I'm gonna make sure I'm really careful when I pull that off so I don't scratch the blank. I'm pull that off and you can see, this is what you're gonna see through. It's a pretty sparkly pink, it's kind of, Kind of see-through i didn't want it super solid but it's a really pretty corally color it's kind of muted not super bright it'll look super cute on a keychain though so what i'm gonna do is set this aside and weed out my decal that's gonna go on the front so i'm gonna use my pin pen and my weeding ring best weeding tools ever i'm gonna go ahead and weed this out so I can put it on the front of my blank. Now, I chose to just do something simple and put the word home on the front. It'll make a super nice, you know, whether it's a gift for someone who lives here, whether it's someone something for someone who used to live in a state and moved away. It's just a cute idea. I currently live in Wisconsin, so I have a lot of these that people have wanted. So this one is actually gonna to go to a friend of mine who requested it. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my transfer tape here and stick that right on the front of our keychain. Now you can choose to do whichever you want. Most of the time when you get a acrylic blank from anywhere, it's gonna come with an SVG file that is going to match that blank. Sometimes they're not the same size, sometimes they are. This one, the current one that I'm using, it did come with one that was the exact same size. So all I did was uploaded that to Design Space, typed out the word using a font that I liked, and made sure that it was going to look right on this particular size blank. If you have one that doesn't match exactly, I simply take it and measure it from top to bottom or side to side, depending on if it's more wide than it is tall. Whichever I do, it's usually going to auto size correctly the other direction once you get it whichever way you're going to size it, whether you're doing top to bottom or side to side. So with this one, it matched up. So I went ahead and typed out the word home. I'm going to stick it just like this on this blank. Now I am going to cover this side with resin as well. You don't have to because the permanent vinyl is going to stay on there. I like to because it gives it a nice domed finish as well as a really glossy finish. That's just going to kind of make it pop a little more than just leaving it flat. So I have that on there. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is add the resin to this. Let it cure and we will come back and do the back side. So I went ahead and put the last coat of resin on the back side once the front was cured, as well as putting the second coat of resin on our little charm here. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and assemble our keychain. Now, with this ring ring tool, you can see that there are a few different size gaps. Bigger rings, smaller rings, pretty self-explanatory. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this works. So I mentioned in the beginning that you're gonna need a few different size jump rings. Now, the way you put them on is entirely up to you. I like to use two per item. So I take my thicker jump ring here that I get that comes with the keychain kit that I order on Amazon. I mean, I go ahead and stick that on there, close it shut. You just wanna be careful. You don't want to put too much pressure on that edge of your acrylic or you can crack it. So I go ahead and put this, this bigger ring on, close it up, and then I like to move that seam where the jump ring meets to the inside so it's not it's not there on the outside for anything to slip through so once that's on I grab a smaller jump ring feed it through there and then attach my keychain hardware to that now the jump rings are, are pretty easy to close so I don't I don't use an extra set of pliers to close them they're pretty easy um, you can if you have a hard time squeezing them shut so that's going to add your keychain. So with my embellishments, I put a tassel on one side and a charm on the next. And I usually do a larger jump ring on the top attached to the key ring. And then a smaller jump ring on the actual charm or the tassel. So I go ahead and put that on there. Bend it shut. And then attach my smaller jump ring here to my charm and my tassel. See what I mean by this ring ring makes everything super easy. I do believe it runs at a size seven, so it might it might not fit on the same finger as mine. It might not fit all the way down your finger. If you can't get it, if you can even only get it like this, that's perfectly fine. All you need to do is have it on your finger so you can stick your jump ring right inside there and use that ring to bend these jump rings open. It makes life a whole lot easier for people whoo, like me who make keychains. That's something that typically happens when I use two pairs, pairs of pliers. These jump rings like to do exactly what they're called and jump. They make super, super tiny ones too that when they fall, you don't find them. Go ahead and add that. Now I picked a kind of a light teal colored tassel to go with my keychain here. Again, you could pick whatever colors you want they don't have to match, they can contrast, they can be whatever it is you like. Sometimes I get charms from Hobby Lobby or Michaels as well to match. They do go on sale often and they make some super, super cute charms. So just like that, our keychain is finished. I like how the tassel and the charm give it a little something extra than it would be if you just had that. Obviously, you can just use that if you don't want the extra, but I like the kind of blinged out addition to the tassel and the charm. Now, if you don't want to use the UV resin, you don't have to. You can use permanent vinyl and just put it right on that blank and it's going to stay there. You can use transparent glitter vinyl as well to get a glittered look without using the resin or loose glitter. There's a lot of possibilities you can do with these keychains. Like I said, I like to use the resin because I think it gives it a really glossy and domed kind of finish there to your keychain. And on your bottle of resin, it's, it's gonna tell you how long to cure it for. It tells you how to use it. So this one in particular says UV curing exposure to UV light for two to four minutes. And if you do the sun curing, it's exposure to sunlight for five to 20. When I use it, I don't really set a timer. I don't really count or pay attention to how long it's under there. 
I just wait until it's not sticky to touch anymore. If it's sticky and you're still leaving fingerprints in it, then it's not cured enough to take it out from under your light or away from your sunlight. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon so you get notified when I upload a new video. And I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.